I left my boyfriend over his foot fetish and I hate myself. I was with him for a year and our relationship was amazing. He constantly made me feel loved and always treated me with respect. He was always doing little things for me and would help me with stuff even when I didn't ask for it. The lovemaking was amazing too. It just felt like we were compatible on every level. About three months ago, he told me he had something to confess. He said that he had a foot fetish and that he hadn't told me about it because an ex of his had taken it weird and he didn't want me to think badly of him. Looking back it was kind of obvious since he would always compliment my nail polish and was pretty eager to rub my feet if I asked him to. He even paid for me to get a pedicure because he said French tips would look cute on me. Nothing really changed much after that point. He wasn't pushy or anything, but he would put my toes in his mouth while we made love, which admittedly felt pretty good. Okay. I was okay. hanging out with three of my friends a few weeks ago and I mentioned that he liked my feet. Two of them started telling me that was a red flag and that he might be a creep. I had seen some people who were weird about it online before but they were showing me all these websites and forums and people who take creep shots of women's feet and I started feeling anxious. My third friend who was there was neutral about it but told me maybe to talk to him because he had never really given off those kinds of vibes. I stupidly didn't and pushed it to the back of my head until I saw him again two days later. We were at my apartment and were messing around. He started to kiss my feet and I pulled back from him. He asked me what was wrong and I spent like 10 minutes just repeating what my friends had told me and about how people who like feet are weird and don't care about anything else. He looked really sad and told me he didn't know I felt like that about him. He got up and left. I don't know why I said any of that dumb crap to him. He had never been creepy. He had never been anything but loving to me but I called him a perv. And then I immediately turned to my friends and they were telling me that he was confirmed one of those creepy feet guys because he left instead of talking to me and apologizing. My mm -hmm. neutral friend again told me to talk to him but I spent two days thinking to myself that there must be something wrong with him. He didn't contact me again so I texted him we need to talk about our relationship. He texted back he would come over that night, and he did. He was holding a box of my stuff I had left at his place and said I'm not going to stay with someone who thinks I'm a predator. Then he just walked away. I was stunned and didn't say anything, but that quickly turned to anger. I just thought they were right. He's a creep. I'm glad he's gone. I turned to my friends again and the two told me they'd help me get over him and hook me up with someone normal. My neutral <laughs> friend advised me again to not leave my relationship like this but I'm a dummy. I'm horrible. I'm a piece of crap and I deserve everything I get. Every night the past month I've been thinking about him, and the more I think the bigger that pit in my stomach gets. It all exploded a week ago. I got extremely drunk and had that horrible realization hit me all at once. I lost the man I loved over nothing. Nothing. It was my fault and I would never be with him again. I was sobbing hysterically and called both of my two friends who had egged me on. I told them that I never wanted to see them again and some other mm. things I won't repeat here. I blocked them on everything. My other friend tried calling me but I couldn't bear to talk to her. It was about 1 in the morning when I called him. He hadn't blocked me so it went through. I begged him to take me back. I told him about what my friends had told me. I told him he wasn't a perv and that I should never have told him that. I told him I loved him more than anything and that I trusted him. That he could do whatever he wanted with any part of my body and that I would Ooh. never think he was some kind of creep because I know he isn't <clears throat> like that. He kept me off eventually. He told me that if I was drinking to please stop and go to sleep. He sounded so sad and it just shattered my heart again. He tried calling me earlier tonight but I didn't pick up. I'm so scared that he's going to tell me to just screw off and leave him alone. I know I would deserve it. I know I deserve worse, but I can't do it. I love him so much. I need him. I just want him to hold me again and touch me wherever he wants and tell me that he forgives me. I feel like throwing up whenever I think that he might never be with me again. I wish I hadn't made this mistake. All right. I feel like I am a perfect person to talk about this one. As you guys know, I've done BDSM since I was like 21, so over a decade, and I've met a lot of kinksters and fetishists. Now, before I get really deeply into it, there is an update to this story. So I'm going to give my initial opinion, and then we'll jump into the update, and we'll continue the conversation. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's video, we are rating this story again on whether or not it is healthy, happy, or kind. Well, and kind. We always want to be all of them. And in this story already, we see young energy, inexperienced, lack of tools, and he lies to her for the first year. Or if you want to recontextualize that conversation or communication style, he kept things private from his partner of a year because he was afraid of how she would react. This is the first thing that stands out to me. Is he obligated to share his kink or fetish with his partner after a year, after a date, after a week? If you're like me, I actually think you're required to say things that are big things pretty early on. I couldn't imagine spending 12 months with someone only to find things out later. But I'll give you a little a bit of a snippet into my own private life of something that happened similarly to me. Uh, not quite a foot fetish, but I was assaulted in my early 20s and kept it secret from everyone in my life because I was quite embarrassed about the situation. And I am diagnosed PTSD now and I understand and I've gone to therapy and I've had a relationship with that, though I think 
ultimately that this is something that I'm still currently struggling with and so I'm dealing with it slowly. But it is something that in one of my relationships as an adult in my 20s, I was asked about. My, you know, I was asked by my partner, have you been assaulted? You're, you seem, you act like someone who's been assaulted. And I denied it. I lied to my partner of, I think, a year at the time, or maybe, maybe we were, yeah, I think we were together for about a year at that point. And I just wasn't ready to talk about it. And the way that he ended up finding out was basically I got triggered during sex. And of course, he quote unquote took it well. Like he didn't reject me because I had been assaulted, which is wonderful. Like that's the hope. But it was something that I did that I now think is dishonest, right? You guys know I went through a phase in my life where I lied for survival a lot. And now that I'm in my 30s and living my best life and I'm not in survival anymore in that same sense, I try very hard never to lie. I think lying is really bad. I think it's not, I think it does a disservice to both you and the people around you. And so it, now, obviously, that's the first thing I mentioned on a first date is, hey, I'm diagnosed PTSD. I was assaulted. Hey, I was diagnosed borderline. I was a queer kid growing up in a conservative home. Hey, here are the things that I'm dealing with, blah, 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 blah. And then the conversation, you know, either continues or doesn't based off of the date that I'm having. And you guys know that I'm engaged and I'm getting married. And so I was able to find a person that could really love my consciousness for who I am. But in this situation, right, I'm seeing young people trying their best to communicate. And this might be a life lesson, right? I don't think this couple's going to stand the test of time for a multitude of reasons. One, he's not ready to not be ashamed of what he's into. And I'm not even sure he's categorizing it correctly. That's what I would like to know. Fetishes are things people need to traditionally finish, right? And a kink is something that turns you on. So is his foot relationship a fetish? Does he capital N need it? Or is it a kink? It capital T turns him on. And I think that's a conversation I would want to have with him. So he knows how to better communicate that to his partners. Now, in defense of the friends and the girl, it is true that foot fetish communities on the internet tend to be a cesspool of human beings. I am not here to kink shame you, but damn those fetishists, because I think it's so a part of like they need it to finish. They sometimes become so obsessed with their fetishes that they do objectify their partners. They do objectify everyone around them. If you go on um, Fet Life and you have a relationship with the kink community and you meet fetishists, some of them, not all of them, are drowning in their fetish. And I think they are disgusting for objectifying their partners because they have a fetish. So in defense of the friends and this girl who have little to no knowledge, obviously, of kink communities or fetish communities, it wouldn't be wrong of them to assume, based off of what the internet tells you, that foot fetishists are the scum of the earth because some of them are horrible people and they have a horrible reputation in their community for a reason. And I think that sucks. I think it sucks the majority of the people representing your community make it look horrible because I'm sure there are lots of good people with foot fetishes. Foot fetishes? Fetishes? Look, as a person who doesn't mind feet, I've definitely had feet in my mouth. I've had feet everywhere. As a person who's like turned on by the relationship I'm having with a person, it's not about the feet. It's about the relationship you're having with that kink or fetish and how you're treating your partners because of it. Now, this guy, generally speaking, pretty healthy, right? He's relatively speaking, like he's considerate of her feelings. He recommends that she does things in a healthy way. He has really strong boundaries. He knows who he is. He d He's not open to being called a predator. I think he's really, really healthy in a lot of ways. Um, it sounded like their relationship was really, really happy. She sounded so content with it up until this point. And it sounded like they had a really kind energy towards one another. Now, you could argue, is it kind to lie to your partner? Or contextualizing or you know changing the perspective is it okay to withhold information from your partner which again to me is lying but for some people there's a stage of which you're dating and you withhold information then you're engaged and you give information or you're married and then you give information so depending on your relationship and how you would like to have it for me I would like to know date one day two, day three, depending on the information. You know, if they're deal breakers, like one of the ways that I dated my now current partner, my forever partner, is that we initially had a conversation about, hey, what what things about you are like traditionally deal breakers for people that we should just go through right now so we don't waste time? And so right away, I just told him like my medical history. Usually that's a deal breaker for a lot of people. Uh, my financial situation, the fact that I'm a gig worker, the fact that I do YouTube, the fact that it's not consistent, you know, that kind of stuff. It's like, hey, like this is my job. This is what I like to do. It takes a lot of hours. Like, how do you feel about that? I'm on the internet 
I'm going to talk about you. I'm going to talk about you. You know what I mean? How do you feel about that? We talked about those things. These people obviously didn't have the tools to do that, right? So overall, I'm kind of sad for them that they kind of had this situation occur because, man, if they had a Britney in their life, they could just come to me and I would orchestrate the conversation and I would be able to move them through. I have done calls with couples. I've done calls with single people who um, are single parts of the couple, you know, one half of the couple. I've I've tried to help bridge communication between couples or throuples because there's just a little bit of tool missing. Nobody's really evil and no one's really bad or ill-intentioned. It's just almost like just nobody has the tools, right? So, okay, let's check out the update and see if we've changed any of our minds on how we think it's going. And I want to hear from you guys in the comment sections down below. Are they healthy, happy, kind? Okay, let's check out the update. Update. I left my boyfriend over his foot fetish and I hate myself. I texted him that I would call him back tomorrow if he still wants to talk. He replied that that would be fine. Also about my friends. I'm going to try to talk to all three of them. I'm still going to cut off the two that pushed me to this because the more I think about it, the more I remember little details that make it seem like they've never really liked my ex, my other oh. friend I'm going to try calling tomorrow. I really Ooh, need sabotage. to apologize to her too. I realize that even if there was pressure on me, this is 100% my fault. I should have mm. taken the time to recognize that my ex was nothing like they were making him out to be, and I shouldn't have discussed his fetish with them, although I mm -hmm. never really discussed the True. sexual part of it and just told them that he thought my feet were cute. I should never have talked about it. I'm going to tell him all of this when we talk. Update 2. I texted him again asking if he'd be okay meeting up in person rather than talking over the phone. I would rather see him face to face and apologize directly to him, rather than over the phone. He replied that he was fine with that, so I'll be heading over to meet him around noon. Let me preface this next part Checks by saying that none of this absolves me at all for what I've done, but I want to give some context to this situation. I've been together with those three friends of mine since high school. We have always been very close and I've trusted them with a lot of intimate details about my mm. life. We all helped each other through bad times and enjoyed a lot of good times too. They were also my first really close friends. In grade school and early high school I kept a lot to myself and didn't interact very much with other kids. I have other friends now, but no one I trusted as much as them. I think a lot of you are right in saying that I have no spine and have let them choose everything for me. Now that I think about it I'm struggling to think of a time when I chose what we were doing on a particular day or where we were eating mm. and other stuff. And I was like that with my ex too, letting him pick whatever even when he specifically asked me what I wanted. I know none of that is an excuse for my weakness, but that's been my life. I've already looked up some therapists that accept my insurance and I'm going to call one to schedule an appointment. After mm -hmm. reading a lot of these comments I'm starting to get more scared at the prospect of him taking me back and me hurting him horribly again in some way. I don't know if I should tell him any of this, but I'm writing down some notes to keep my thoughts on what I'm going to say to him organized. First I'm going to apologize to him for what I did, even if that's the only thing I can get out before he leaves. I'm going to tell him how sorry I am and that I will go with whatever he decides, even if that means I never see him again. Thank you for the comments, I know I'm not a good person, but I'm going to try to be better. And if he does take me back I'm going to become someone he deserves to be with, I'll probably make an update post later if anything happens. <clears throat> Final update, I just got back from meeting him. Before I start, I don't intend anything in this update to be taken as a self-absolution of guilt or blame. I accept that I'm the one that screwed up and the blame rests solely on me. I'm not trying to diminish that or what I did. So there's a park about halfway between both of our places. We decided to meet there. I hmm. arrived a few minutes before he did and was very nervous. When I saw him walking up I felt the urge to cry but I drove it down. I didn't want to do anything that would make him think I'm trying to manipulate him. It was worse when he hugged me, but I managed to compose hmm. myself. He asked how I was doing and I told him the truth, that I was messed up. I asked him the same and he told me he was okay but he had that same sad look on his face from the last time I saw him. I asked him if I could tell him something before we talked about anything else and pulled out the apology I had written in my notes. I told him I was sorry for everything, I was sorry for making him feel unsafe with me, I was sorry for ever insinuating that he was a perv, I was sorry for betraying his trust and telling others about our intimate life, I was sorry for not communicating with him, I was sorry for not standing up for him. I was sorry for not standing up for myself and letting my opinion of him be colored by anything other than the two of us. I was sorry for leaving him in the dark for a month and not talking to him sooner. I was sorry for my drunken rant, for trying to emotionally manipulate him into coming back to me, and especially for making him feel like I still thought he was a perv. I was sorry for hurting him the same way his ex had. At one point I noticed he was tearing up, and I just couldn't hold it anymore. I cried while I finished reading it to him. I told him that I was truly happy with him and I hope he isn't put off from exploring his fetish in the future whoever that might be with, he thanked me and we cried together for a little while. He started talking and told me the reason he called was that two of my friends had contacted him and explained <gasps> that they were worried about me and told mm. him some of what had happened. It was the neutral friend along with one of the two friends who had fed me the stuff about foot fetishes. I okay. didn't get a lot of the specifics, mm. and I didn't ask anything else because there was more important stuff he wanted to talk about, but I guess I could get what happened straight from one of them. 
I was a little deflated after he told me this and worried he might think I was trying to manipulate him through my friends, but he quickly moved on. He told me the whole story about his ex, they had been together for longer than we had, about two years, before he told her about his fetish, the difference was that she was immediately disgusted by it, she, told him she was leaving no matter how much he begged and promised he would never bring it up again, but then he told me what I did felt much worse because it seemed like I had accepted him only to mm. stab him in the back, I wanted to get on my knees and beg him to forgive me, but I let him finish. In the end, we were both quiet for a while before he asked if we were done, I know I should have been strong and told him that I would go with whatever he decided, but I'm weak, I asked him if there was any chance we could still be together, he told me that he still had feelings for me but that he couldn't handle me hurting him again, I mentioned the stuff with my friends and that I was looking to start therapy, he told me he was happy that I was doing that, but it wasn't changing his mind, he said there might be a chance in the future, after I've worked on myself, mm. but right now he was too hurt. I get the feeling that he was just saying that so I wouldn't be hurt, we hugged again and said goodbye and I had to fight every urge in my body to not run after him. I know I screwed up at the end, but I'm taking steps to make sure it doesn't happen again, I'm going to call my friend, the neutral one, and ask if she can forgive me for not talking to her too, and maybe if she can come over and hide my phone from me so I don't get the urge to bother mm, him, I don't weak. know about my two other friends, I don't know about anything right now, I spent like five mm. of the last six hours crying and I feel just about out of tears, I'm running on like three hours of sleep. I think I'm going to just try and sleep and then continue looking for therapists in the morning. I don't know if I'll update any more so sorry if anyone was expecting more. Extra update, so this is going to be the last thing I'll post. I slept for a while and when I woke up my friend got in contact with me and came over. She wasn't the least bit mad at me and was just concerned that I hadn't talked to her. I apologized profusely to her. I really don't deserve her kindness, but it honestly felt good after everything today. To the people who messaged me with concern, thank you and I think I'll be fine. I'm still going to go to therapy to work on my problems and make sure I never do something like this to someone I love ever mm -hmm. again, I'm mm -hmm. probably never posting on this account again, I had some mm. people messaging me some weird shit and claiming to be people in my life, so if you ever see someone try and make an update for this story, it ain't actually me, the only person in my circle that actually uses reddit is my friend that's with me now, I showed her this and she's assured me she won't post about it, Good night. Okay, so good things, bad things. I saw a few flags, a few, again, they're really young. And so a part of me wants to just give like major leniency to that youth. Um, there's a lot of mistakes to be made here. A lot of lack of knowledge. I'm not hearing the right keywords for me to think that they know what they're talking about, including the boyfriend. I actually want to say that she said that his last relationship was two years long before he told his ex that he had a thing for feet and then the ex blew up on him. I think I'd be pretty pissed too if somebody dated me for two years and then told me this thing. And then the fact that he, according to her, told his ex, like, I'll never mention it again. There's just like a lot of weakness and shame and probably guilt, but I'm not seeing a lot of strength here. I'm not seeing people who said, you know what? Hey, I'm into feet. You like, like it or don't like it, but this is my thing. I'm seeing a lot of... I want people to accept me, but I don't even accept me. So I don't think either of them are ready for a relationship. And I think it's probably a good idea that they didn't end up together. I think she needs some time. He needs some time. But I would really recommend for people in this situation, and this is just my opinion as somebody who's been in the kink scene for over a decade plus, you know, you have to learn to own it. You have to learn to say, yeah, I do that. I'm a cosplayer. I'm a kinkster. I'm a religious person. I am a trad wife. You have to be able to own your weird because it is weird. We pick these bubbles, this way of existing, this way of connecting with ourselves, this way of sharing with other people. And it's like we don't want to own how weird we are. You think I don't know I'm weird that I do BDSM? Like, come on, you know? It's like you got to own how weird you are because it is kind of normal in some ways. Like people be out here doing the wildest stuff behind closed doors. And it's, I think, better if we kind of talk about it openly and have more, you know, healthy, happy, kind relationships with ourselves and the things that we're interested in. So I'm going to say, you know, they had a lot of points for the super superficial relationship that they had. So in their superficial relationship, they were happy. They were kind. They were healthy. But of course, once the relationship asks for depth, once you're challenged to actually be more honest, then it starts to crack and crumble, right? So then it becomes unhealthy. He's lying to her. It becomes unhealthy. She's fearful, right? She's moving off fear instead of actually considering the person she's dated for a year. She's too weak to not doubt herself. He's too ashamed not to be himself, right? I know I like that she's using words like accountability and therapy and all of this, those things are great words. Those are great things. 
I want to point out too, oversharing is a really bad habit and one that I suffered from in my my 20s. I overshared with my friends about my relationship a lot. Now, a big part of it is that there's safety in, in sharing. You know, sometimes when you're in a relationship, you might think something is normal and then you share it with people and they're like, hey, that's not normal. And sometimes it's the saving grace between you being in an abusive relationship and you not being in one. But then sometimes, let's say you're in a healthy relationship and you're still oversharing, well, now you're just violating your partner's privacy. Now, for me, I had to learn the lesson between when I'm in a toxic relationship and then I'm trying to share as a way to call for help and when I'm in a healthy relationship and I'm oversharing in a way that's inappropriate. So with my current and forever partner now, I obviously want to really respect his privacy and I hope he respects mine. And so we just check in with each other like, hey, can I tell my sister this? Can I tell my brother this? Hey, can I tell my family this? Hey, like, is this okay or is this like private? How do we feel about sharing this? We have the conversation. But when I was in my toxic relationships, I think because I knew they weren't healthy, though I had hoped they would become one day, I was like, oversharing as like a call for help. I was like, oh my God, is this, I'm so unhappy. Is this normal? I keep being told this is what relationships are. Relationships are hard, but are they supposed to be hard like this? Or are they supposed to be hard in a different way, right? Like life is hard. But in this situation, I think it's hard unnecessarily because neither person is willing to be really open, honest, and vulnerable. I think they're both really afraid of getting hurt, right? which is like a form of weakness, which we can work on. So it's okay that you're weak in the sense that like, don't worry, it's not the end of the world, but like, let's work on getting a little strong. I like that they met in a neutral place, like the park. I thought that was really healthy, right? There's a lot of really good signs here of really aware people. Um, I like that they know each other's boundaries or at least they were willing to communicate them. I wonder, is she really sorry because she knows exactly what went wrong or is she sorry because she's losing everything? I think by the end of the last update, it's a little bit of both. And so I'm going to give that like definitely a point for it being more on the healthy side. I don't see a lot of toxicity in this relationship. I don't even see a lot of unhappiness. What I see is a lot of misunderstanding and, and no tools to fix the misunderstanding because the hurt's already there, right? One of the sort of like reddish flags that I that I thought of that happened in the last video before the update was that she said, you know, I'll take him back. He can do whatever he wants with my body. This is not good, right? Because yes, he has a foot fetish and you're accepting it. That's great. But what if the next time he wants to draw blood? What if the next time he wants to scar you? What if the next time he wants to you still get to have boundaries while accepting your partner for who they are. Like just because you're with somebody who likes something doesn't mean you guys have to do it, right? Like there, it's okay to kind of say, oh yeah, I'm really into this kink, but if you're not into it, like I can live the rest of my life without it. But a fetish, and this is why it's so important that you have a conversation about the difference. A fetish is traditionally something you need to finish, you know, to have the big O. So it's a little difficult to live without it. But a kink is something that just turns you on. And you can live without kinks. Can you live without a fetish? And then that's the question. Is it something you should go to therapy for? Is it something you really want to be trapped by? Is it something you're really proud of and you have a healthy relationship with? And you're like, yeah, I'm good with like not like being in a relationship if I can't get this, right? So ultimately for me, I really appreciate people like this sharing their stories because obviously, and again, I've talked to callers about this. I've talked to viewers about this. This is something that's common. You have a relationship with someone that on the surface is wonderful and intimate and happy and kind and just like the greatest thing ever. And then the moment there's depth, the moment there's intimacy, the moment there's a vulnerability, you might learn something that you're not actually ready to handle and it can feel really overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be the end of the world. With the right tools and the right information, it can be something you can have a good relationship with or it can be something that you learn that you can't have a good relationship with and no harm, no foul, there's a breakup, right? So the question is, depending on how you wanna do relationships, if you want it long-term, 50 years, maybe monogamous, maybe not, you're really asking yourself the question, what's our lifestyle? What's the thing we're investing in? How deep of a relationship do we want to have? Look, plenty of couples are together for 50 years and neither couple, neither person in the couple shares their most intimate kinks. Neither person in the relationship shares their fetishes. Sometimes they just go on the internet and do it behind your back. That's the reality. So if you want to have a person in your life that's able to communicate with you what kind of porn they watch, what kind of thing turns them on, you have to create that safe space. You have to create that space. I think if you have really good values of accepting people but also having boundaries, you could hear somebody out and still end the relationship. And I think that person, if they're also healthy, 
can recognize like you're not ending the relationship because you have a foot fetish. You're ending the relationship because the lifestyle now doesn't match. Like if I was in a relationship with someone and they were secretly like hoping I would be religious one day, that's I'm not breaking up with you because you literally are religious. I'm breaking up with you because you are but you have a belief system and a lifestyle that's not going to coincide with mine and it's too much friction for me. Plenty of people date who are atheist and spiritual, atheist and religious. Hell, there's Republicans and Democrats who date and marry. So it's not that you can't do it. It's just that the person that I am, Brittany, I need to be on the same page as my partner. You know what I'm saying? So I try really hard to create a safe space to allow my partner to come to me and for me to go to him and to have these conversations. But it, because again, I am a kinky person. I do have a lot of kinks. I have a lot of things I want to do with him. I want to explore a lot of ideas. And I'm never going to get my needs met if I don't communicate them right? And then I'm not going to get my needs met all the time. There are going to be things I'm going to be into that maybe he won't be able to do with me. Like I'm really into women. I'm bisexual. I could have ended up with a woman. I'm actually like pansexual. So I really could have ended up with anyone. If I tell him I have a boob fetish, well, what's he going to do about it? Actually, I wouldn't have a fetish. I would have a kink. So if I told him I have a boob kink, what, what's my partner going to do? Am I going to ditch my relationship with my partner to go get a boob kink? No, I'm not willing to sacrifice my relationship for some sort of version of turn on when I can just use my imagination. We can just watch porn together and I can use my imagination. Do you get what I'm saying? So again, it's about creating a safe space and recognizing what are you willing to settle for and what aren't you willing to settle for? I'm more than happy to settle into a relationship that doesn't have to do with my values. My values do not coincide with my love for boobs. That's just a cherry on top thing. That's like an extra. I don't need the extra. It has nothing to do with the real relationship. It's just for funsies. So again, this couple, Thank you for sharing your story because so many people are in this situation right now. And if you find yourself in this situation and you want to talk to somebody who will not judge you, call me. I am the perfect person to talk to because I have dealt with all kinds of kinks, all kinds of fetishes, all kinds of humans. And I am telling you right now, there is a place for you in the universe. You just got to find the right like bubble. You know what I'm saying? All right, guys, with that said, I'd love to hear your comments in the sections down below. If you guys are interested, please join us on Discord where we'll further, you know, dive into these conversations. I'm sure a lot of you are already very opinionated about it since there's a lot of people with very unique uh, relationships with their kinks on the Discord. Um, with that said, I will talk to you guys next video. Okay, bye. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Done.